give somebody a little bit of water, a little bit of food, and a little bit of freedom and see what they can become. I was given a little bit of food, a little bit of water, and this is where I came from. From a small indigenous person, from a small First Nations person in Saskatchewan, who was taught that he was never going to be anything, to presenting to ministers. Hi, I'm Nicole Elmy, and I'm the National Director for Indigenous Relations with the Canadian Coast Guard. And I'm very happy to be here today with Lucius Perot in his music studio on an episode of Journey With Me. My name is Lucius Perot. I am Cree from Kaosis First Nations in Saskatchewan, coming to you from the Lekungwin speaking peoples. I've been here since October 17th, 1995, and that is a very, very important date in my journey to here. The Lucius prior to 1995 was not on a great path. There was drugs, there was booze, there was fighting. Growing up, I didn't particularly have a huge parental guidance. I had some good friends, so I also faced a lot of racism growing up. Mm -hmm. Ultimately led me to move and kind of face a little, little jaunt of homelessness for a while in Regina. Luckily, I have beautiful brothers and sisters that allowed me to couch surf with them. Getting back into high school in Regina, all of my friends' parents were able to, to speak with me. I was able to get guidance from them. You know, I'd walk over to my friend's place every morning and I'd have breakfast with her parents. She'd be downstairs sleeping still, <laughs> so I'd have breakfast with them. I've had a great support system of parents. And then I met the most beautiful girl I've ever seen in my life at my high school. The very first thing I ever said was, someday we're gonna get married. When she moved out to Victoria, BC, I couldn't stand not to be around her. Without knowing anybody but her and her family, I had to leave my support system, and I thought this is a great way to reinvent myself. Where no one knows me, no one knows anything about my past, they only know who's present with you at this very point. We can fast forward a bunch, but we're married with three children, and now my, as my children grow up, I realize the importance of the decisions I was able to make and happy and thankful for the people that are that were around me that helped me make those types of decisions. You took quite a journey and we have yet to discuss your love of music. My parents they were in a band, so music has always been a part of my life. You're sitting in a in our studio. This is the art farm. And the only reason I ever wanted to become an engineer was to build guitar apps. <laughs> Well, I learned how to do that in my very first year of schooling. And I thought, I wonder what else you could possibly do with this. And you know, when you leave school, your resume just gets thrown out there. The engineering manager at the time, he kept on calling and calling and calling. So I called him and said, I'll come in. And, and uh, halfway through the hands-on portion, he just comes down and says, you have the job. I've been with DFO Science for 21 years. I don't want to sell it too big, but it's really just a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> I get to work with crazy scientists. I get to build stuff with my friends and I get paid to do that. Really, my entire job consists of where's water coming from? Where's water going? And I collect all the data needed for that. We get to travel, get to go on ships and meet all sorts of Coast Guard people. That's why I love my job. My very first trip out I didn't know anybody. <laughs> we had probably 10 or 15 people in my cabin playing guitar. We had upside down garbage cans as drums. And music to me has always brought people together. Whether or not I'm sitting in my parents' smoky kitchen, I'm sitting in a nice, beautiful recording studio, or I'm sitting on the deck of the Franklin or the Tully playing guitar. If I start playing, people start coming around. And Lucius, that's reconciliation at the heart of it. So yeah. thank you for that. You did mention that you took on a bit of a different role, which of course is where we met. I saw the posting for the Reconciliation Advisor. I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna put my resume in. I'm not qualified. There's no way they're gonna call me. Well, they called me. They interviewed me. Ultimately, they offered me the job. So I immediately call up my auntie mom. So I call my auntie mom and say, they, they've offered me this position. It's gonna be faced with a lot of emotional ups and downs. And why would I leave my hobby of a job as an engineer with DFO to do something so difficult? And she said, son, when you have an opportunity to make a difference, it's, it's up to you to take on that challenge because it's gonna make things easier for your family. It's gonna make everything easier for your generations to come. And that really resonated a lot with me. 
Not every good thing is easy. And I realized that I can do what's within arm's reach for me. When I was a child, I didn't have a lot of power, but I could affect a couple of people around me. As I grew into adulthood, suddenly I have a family. My arms got a little bit bigger. Do what's within arm's reach, whatever that may be. You have the ability to affect change for people around you. Even though I'm not in the reconciliation advisory position anymore, I still want to do as much as I can. If I can do what I've done, then everybody can. We've made a lot of positive steps, not only just accepting Indigenous cultures and people into the federal government, but we're not there yet. We have a lot of steps. It's not going to be easy, but we're, we can do it. I have hope. Yeah, I have hope. We have to cultivate kindness, and that's the first step in reconciliation.